Shalom, Yashallah, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give a fitting honors to my Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Yaqaq, Wadash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles, the elders of GMS that rule well the truth and sincerity. I'd like to give salutations to the shepherds of Bread Camp. Say it to the house of David, Dab Dab Dab, man, woman, and children out there pushing this word of truth sincerity. Say it to the hopeful elect. May the most high raise you up in a speedy fashion. It's the priest Karal Kakahan from Shepherds of Bread Camp. And I pray that this be an edifying and straight to the point lesson. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I just finished watching that movie Creed 3, and it uh, made me think about another concept. Um, and pretty much, you know, I'm going to entitle this, you know, the Lord keeps you battling so you can stay in shape for the time of Jacob's trouble. You know, long title, you may not write that whole thing in, but the point of the matter is that's exactly what it is, what it's about. You know, and this truth, brothers are constantly going through, you know, tribulation throughout their everyday walks of life. You know, from the second you wake up, Satan's going to be messing with you from the second you go to sleep. And hey, even sometimes, even within your dreams. And I say that to say, you know, the Lord does this to really keep you mentally and most of all spiritually in shape, man. You know, when you're going through it, though, you know, it hurts. It's painful. Like, oh, why is it always something going on? But you don't understand, like, this whole thing is the Lord's arena. You know, scriptures tell you that what? The Most High is a man of war. So therefore, it only makes sense that the ones that he's going to save, Yahweh, Yahweh, you know, his true family, the whole four elect, is going to be cut from that same cloth. They're going to be warriors. Now, how are you a warrior? The key word is war. You're going to have to go through war. You're going to have to go through battles. Okay? Just like how they say, yo, you had to get it, get it out the mud. You're going, we're going to have to get it out the mud, aren't you? And how are you going to be able to stand in the time of Jacob's trouble? How are you going to be able to stand in the ultimate war if you ain't never been through no battles? You know, you can always tell when somebody has never been through something when you're talking about that subject and they act funny and you know, they fake the funk. And you can tell, okay, this person's never been through that. They've never been through this. They've never been through life concept. They've been sheltered. You know, they've gone through, they haven't gone through certain things. Guess what? In this life that we're in, the Lord is going to put us through battles if he cares for us. It may seem like you're going through hell, but it's all for a greater purpose at the end. We got 1 Timothy 6 and 12. It says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Yeah, man. Lay hold on it. Fight the good fight of faith. So what does that let you know? This situation in, li in life, dealing with faith, it's going to be a fight. And you got to fight it. From guess what? People putting doubts in your mind, you're going to have to fight it. From people saying, oh, the Lord ain't come back yet. He ain't come back yet. He's never come back. You're going to have to fight them with faith. The scriptures tell you that what? Faith is what? The substance of things not seen. Which means what? It can't be faith if you see it. But we can see our invisible power. We can see Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. You know how we can see him? Through the Holy Scriptures. We can see him by just looking at life. Somebody had to create this world. We can see him by just... Dealing with concepts of this world. We can see them by the fact that brothers constantly getting blessings. Brothers constantly having food in their mouth every day. Clothes on their back. A shelter to stay. Reading the scriptures and seeing that the same things that was talked about thousands upon thousands of years ago are happening now. That in itself is faith boosters. The Lord even showing chariots to us. Which he doesn't, which he doesn't have to do. Those are faith boosters. And you're going to have to fight brothers. We have to fight. This whole thing right now is one big boxing ring. And in that movie Creed 3, all he was doing was fighting. Me, personally, I took that, took at it, looked at it more as he was fighting more mentally and spiritually. Because that's what it was. And guess what? That's what we're going to be going through. 
This is a spiritual fight. This is a this is a mental fight. Yes, we're gonna go through physical as well. And I'm saying, you know, your body messing up. You know, your body's starting to ache, go through certain pains, things of that nature. You know, and hey, you may get to an actual physical fight, but it's gonna always be way more, it's always 99% more mental and spiritual than it is physical. Because what it is spiritual is gonna reflect your physical. But I say that to say, guess what? A lot of things are gonna happen. You're gonna be put in a situation where you probably didn't work in a year. But guess what? That's a fight of your faith. Knowing that you haven't worked in a year, but yet you're still alive. So something's sustaining you. How are you always able to still have money in your bank account without you doing anything illegal? The Lord's still blessing you. That's a fight on your faith. You didn't say, let me go out and go rob somebody. You didn't say, you know, let me go over here and start credit card scamming. No, that's a fight of your faith, knowing that as long as I continue to do good and have faith in Yah Bashim Yah Bashah, he gonna, he's going to what? Take care of me and look out for me, just like how he looked out for all his prophets. It says lay hold on eternal life. So you know what that means? That's a fight. You have to hold on to that bad boy. When you're in the boxing ring and you clenching, you holding on. That's how you got to be in this truth. Eternal life is there. And you can't let it slip from your grasp. That's the fight. And you know what's trying to make it slip from your grasp? Everything else around you. Everything else in this world. Whether it be your job. Whether it be your rib. Whether it be your mother, your father. Whether it be individuals in the world that's just honking at you when you're trying to drive. Or people making it so hard just for you to put certain paperwork in that you got to deal with for months on in. Just to try to establish yourself. Always another hiccup. Always something you have to do. You've been trying to get things done for a whole week. And there's always somebody being incompetent about it. No, those are demons on them. The only thing to do is try to hold you up. That's all he can do. He tries to hold things up. But he can't stop it. But the thing is not about stopping it. It's about, can he hold it up enough that you lose faith? Because one thing for sure, two things for certain, in this world, we know what? That two-thirds of our people are going to be destroyed, and we know that the Lord is going to deliver the one-third of Israel, starting with the hopeful elect. So he's not stopping anything. But can he hold it up just enough that you forget, and you lose faith, and you let go of that eternal life. It says, where unto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. And yeah, just like in that movie, the profession was boxing. Guess what? We're boxing in this truth. And our number one contender is Satan and his children that he has on his world. Talking about what? Esau, you elite banking families, man. And your family line that comes from that. Two thirds of our people. Huh? The ones that want to continue to be slaves in this wicked society. We are fighting against spiritual wickedness in high places, man. And a demon can jump on anybody. He can jump on a loved one. Because that's how Satan's going to come at you more. He's going to come at you with the, those that's closest to you. Look how he tried to come at Look how he came at Yahweh Shai. He came at him through Judas. That's what's going to happen in this truth. You're going to have to fight. You're going to have to prove what is your profession. Like I just said, Spartan, what is your profession? What is your profession, man? And our profession is what? To fight. We're fighters of faith, man. We got Sirach, excuse me, we got Zechariah 13 and 9. It says, and I will bring the third part to the fire and will refine them as silver is refined. Yeah, man, and guess what? Fire is a cleansing agent. And we're going to do what? The fire of adversity, man. Okay? But it's only to cleanse us. But guess what? Fire is still fire. It's going to burn. It's going to hurt. But this fire is meant to make you stronger. Okay? To get that impurities out. Matter of fact, let me keep going. It says, and we'll try them as gold is tried. And guess what? When you're dealing with being tried, you're dealing with what? A test. You got to get tested. Gold is put into fire so it can take out all the impurities. That's the only way it can do it. And guess what? You being or believing you a man of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, a prophet, you're going to be put through ultimate tests because we're meant to be judges. So we got to be put through the battlefield. Hey Amen. When you look at extremely great men like King David, that kingdom was earned. 
It wasn't just given to him. He had to fight for that. King David had a lot of blood on his hand. He had to fight for that. He went through the trials and tribulations to be a king, to have that crown on his head. Huh? That's what made it so much more worth it. That's what made him appreciate it more. He had to fight for it. It was always another battle. Testing his integrity. Do I kill Saul or do I just let the Lord deal with it? That was a test of integrity. That was a battle. Knowing when to do something, when not to do something, when to call it, call somebody out for it. It's a, these are different battles that we're going to be dealing with, brothers. And you have to know that. Instagram constantly popping up. Do you stay on it all day long? That's a battle. Because it's distracting you from real issues at hand. Hell, even you starting to believe Instagram. Instant gratification. A gram like drugs. To make you get high. Instant gratification. That in itself is a battle. Because you start to believe the hype. Meanwhile, when you're looking all through the news, people are mourning. People are dying. People is uproars of the people. But yet on Instagram, all the hundreds of millions of people that's on there living their best life. Come on, man. We're on a we're in a time of war. I don't know if you people understand that. These are physical battles going on here, but ours is mental. It says, They shall call on my name. And I will hear them. So what name is that? That's the only name that's going to hear you That's going to get you through that It can't be Allah Because these dudes are going Head first into blowing themselves up It can't be that it can't be Krishna These individuals end up being Sodomites The whole LGBT movement When you go deeper into it It can't be that Even when you look at Ishmael, when you look at the so-called Arabs dealing with Allah, all they do is fight, fight, battle. That's all they do. And I'm talking about physical battles. I mean, blowing themselves up, killing people. That can't be the way. The Lord is about bringing in life. All they're doing is destruction. So that name is what? It's talking about Yahweh Shah, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah. That's the only thing that's going to help you get through this battle and give you only so much that you can bear. Why? Because he's constantly training you. Every battle that he's giving you, that's him putting you through another workout regimen. All right, now do the jump rope. Cool, you passed that one. The time is just front. Take a little break. And that's how this truth go. You're going to go through something, and there's going to be a day where it's like, all right, cool. Cool sailing, nice day. Then you're going to go through something again. That's those bricks in between. He's not going to completely destroy you, but he got to constantly put you through tests because that's only going to make you better and better and better. And keep you and keep your guards up. It says, I will say, It is my people, and they shall say, The Lord is my power. And just like anything else, you know, and it's hot, it's heavy, just like a son. You know, when a son grows up and constantly gets, you know, chastised by his father, you know, it's his a certain time when he gets older and he says, Thank you to his father. He says, Thank you for making me the man I am today. I didn't understand it then, but I understand it now. And guess what? The Lord is going is the same way. He's going to be pleased at that. Because guess what? The 144,000 that wake up to this truth, guess what? They appreciate the Lord and they're going to understand that. And the Lord is going to give them that precipitation by saying, those are my people. Those are my sons. And you're going to be proud of a son like that. You're going to be proud of a child like that. That constantly fight and endure and listen to instructions. Didn't buck up. Didn't forsake you. Didn't say, oh, I hate you. No, just dealt with it. And just trusted the process. We got Proverbs 24 and 10. It says, if thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. See that, man? And that's what the Lord doesn't want for you. Two thirds are done already. You know why their faith is small? Even when you look at that movie in Creed, guess what? He had to go through a ri rigorous training session. Why? Because he was away from the ring for a while. He never went through no battles. But Damien was hungry. He was constantly fighting. So it was a difference 
A difference in style, difference in demeanor, difference in mindset. Same thing in this truth. When a brother has too much mirth going on, and we're not saying in life we can't have a balance, but when there's too much mirth going on, when you look at these individuals, P. Diddy, Jay-Z, they constantly living it up, got more money than their hearts could want, constantly going here, constantly going there. That's how you know the most high. It's done. Hey, like Freestyle One My Young would say, hey, when you want to know who the, who the Lord don't care for, who the Lord don't love, pretty much paraphrasing, look who he gives the money to. Because it provides you with, what, a uh, greater access to pleasure. Now, how can you be in a war zone, in a battle, and have your mind on pleasure at the same time? It doesn't work. You're going to get distraction. You're going to get distraction and you're going to die on the battlefield. That's why it says, if thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. Meaning what? You didn't build your spirit. You didn't build your spiritual strength up. And that's why the Lord is constantly putting us through trials and tribulation. To keep us on point. To build up our strength. Because every time you battle, you're just getting stronger. The Lord is breaking you down to build you back up even stronger. That's how your, that's how your muscles work. When you go to the gym, you're not building your muscles. You're breaking down your muscles so that now you can put in that proper protein so it can build back up again. With the rest, it can build back up again. That's what this whole thing is about. And what is it all coming to? Jeremiah 30 and 7. It says, Alas, for the day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. You see that, man? The Lord wants you to endure for this day. That's what it says, at last. At last, guess what? The main card, like they would say, the main fight of the night. Just like how now <laughs> you had that fight that everybody's waiting to see, Javante Davis. Huh? And um, uh, what's my man's name, man? <laughs> I actually forgot my man's name. What's my man's name, man, that he's supposed to fight? Uh, let me look that up real quick. Javante. Oh, Ryan Garcia. There you go. That's the one that everybody's waiting to fight now. Two undefeated individuals. That would be like the main fight. That's what's going on now. Jeremiah 30 and 7 right here. This is ultimately the main fight. And what's that going to be comprised of? Martial law. The time where Esau is going to be trying to force. Not trying. He's going to be forcing. Okay. His RFID. Our RFID chip, the MOTB, onto the people. People are going to be out here starving, haven't eaten in days. Cannibalism is coming back. People are going to be kicked out of their household. People are going to be uh, 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 dragged into the street, killed in front of their loved ones if they don't take this chip. It's going to be mass mayhem out here. The Lord is constantly doing that to prepare you for the ultimate war. And a lot of it is dealing with your mind, the decisions that you make, because you're a judge. So you have to make decisions in this world. You have to make judgment calls. That's what the Lord is dealing with. Excuse me. That's what the Lord is putting on us. And yes, it's going to be hard. But you have to endure it, Akio. And guess what? You're going to appreciate it in that time when brothers get beamed up in those chariots. Because if you've never did any type of uh, workout or been through any battles in life and everything was just plush, when that time comes, you're going to be caught off guard. You're not going to know what to do. You're not going to know what to do. And that's why the Lord does that to certain individuals and give them certain uh, money and be able to live a certain lifestyle. Because ultimately, he's, it's a trick bag. Yeah, lift this up now. But when that time of Jacob's trouble comes, let's see what you're going to do. When the time of the MOTB is established, let's see if you take it. Seeing that you wasn't taking heed to the warnings, you didn't see how severe this was. These are all battles getting us prepared for the ultimate war. We got Hebrews 12 and 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastiseth, and, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Right, like I said before. If he loves you, he's going to chastise you. Why? Because he's preparing you to be a man. Because guess what? Life is hard. It's not sweet. Okay? Yes, you appreciate being live, but guess what? There's individuals in this world that wants to take advantage of you. 
that want to see you dead. Satan is going to use all these individuals that want to ca cause harm on you. I want you to give up the faith. And you got to be prepared for that. So you have to embrace these battles because it's just going to make you stronger. Ultimately, we're all trying to be what? Kings. Okay? We're all trying to be kings, man. It says Yasha Allah. Okay? Which is Israel in Hebrew, which means what? Prince of the power. Okay? We're all trying to be kings in our own right, and that's what the Lord is preparing us for. The Lord is preparing us to be kings, Akim. So you got to go through these battles. Because how are you going to be able to run a kingdom? If you ain't never been through nothing, if you can't make a judgment call because you've never been through situations. It says verse 7, If ye endure chastising, the most high dealer with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chastises not? Right, he has to correct you. He has to tell you what's right, what's wrong. Because you got to be able to govern individuals. You have to be able to make judgment calls. And ultimately, you're a reflection of him. You're a reflection of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. And just like in this world, if you had a king that was chastising his son, he's preparing him for when he passes away, that kingdom is translated to his son. And he has to make sure that he's a righteous ruler. So that line could carry on. And that's what the Lord is doing. Because the kingdom of heaven is the kingdom of heaven is going to be established. It's going to be established. And when I say that, I mean on earth. We already know the kingdom of heaven already exists. We're talking about on earth. This wicked rulership has to go down first. But it's 144,000 men that's going to be the governing body. And those men are going to be chastised. Because he's preparing them for that righteous rulership. And you got to be deemed worthy for that, man. Verse 8. But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons? Right. So, hey, man, this in itself lets you know if the Lord is not putting you through anything, if he's not putting you through a vigorous workout of your faith, Huh? And I know how that is, man. You know, when you do, when you take certain uh, martial arts and, you know, uh, boxing and certain things as a kid, you know, you be feeling like shh, your sensei or your father or whoever was training you want to kill you. You may break down. You might cry. You're like, oh, fuck, damn, I can't take this no more. But they see something in you that you may not even see in yourself right now. They see potential. They see how great you could be. If the Lord called you into this truth, then why are you doubting it? Even when you go through something, the fact that you have this knowledge means what? The Lord sees something in you, but now you got to prove yourself. You got to prove it. You got to have faith. Not to be prideful, to be humble, but have faith. And say, hey, if the Lord called me, he called me for a reason. You just pray that as in righteousness, man, and you do your job. Because if not, and you're just living it up, and you're not going through nothing, hey, this right here is letting you know you're a bastard. Because if you're not getting no chastisement at all, you're living your best life like you say, that, that means you're a bastard. That means you're not a son of the Most High. And we all know in this thing of ours, there's only one or the other. If you're not a son of the Most High, then who are you a son of? Think about it. Who are you serving then? If it's not the Lord, then who? And you don't want to be on that side. We got Romans 8 and 18. It says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be re revealed in us. You see that, man? So even everything that you're going through, even that last fight, you know, rebuking the hell out of Satan. Huh? Cursing out these elite banking families. 
The Lord putting the spirit on you to not take that MOTB. To strive for that truth unto death. Guess what? Everything you go through is still going to seem like <laughs> it was nothing compared to the glory that you're going to receive at the end. Again, when you're in that boxing match, it's, it's hard. But when it's all done and you got the victory, it feels like everything you go through was nothing compared to you getting that 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 belt. And in this truth, we're not looking for a belt. We're not looking for something that was made by men. No, we're looking for those crowns. And guess what? That crown is not made by men. Queen Elizabeth, Queen uh, King King Charles, all these individuals, they got crowns made by men. People work their whole life just so they can get a made back, so they get a house. These are things created by men. No, we're looking for that crown of life. You know how rare that is? To have something put on your head that wasn't man-made? Even if they was to come out with a certain Bugatti and say, yo, we only made one of these. That can't even, that still was man-made. That can't even touch how rare. I, I wish it was another word I could use instead of saying rare. It is not only to have something that was that was created by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah himself and also placed on your head. Come on, man. And then with that, have spiritual powers, have your own, have your own uh planet to govern. Come on, man. These battles are needed. Because the Lord is getting us ready for the ultimate fight so that we can pass it. And receive this glory, man. And let's get it. Last one, Revelation 3 and 11. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast. Right, man. So the Lord is telling you everything that you're going through right now. Hey, just deal with it. Because I'm coming quickly, man. You may not think so because you're, going, you're only thinking about yourself. And you feel like you're the only one going through something. But just know, oh, a lot of prophecies are coming to pass. Which is showing the Lord is coming back quickly. So don't worry about what you're going through. Just deal with it. Get stronger from it. Because ultimately the Lord is going to be here in no time. And you don't want to be caught lacking. It says, hold that fast which thou hast. Right? Meaning what? This truth. This knowledge. Hold fast to it, man. Don't give up. Stay in the fight. Don't throw in the towel. It says that no man take thy crown. You see that? That's what you're fighting for. When two individuals are in the ring fighting for that belt, one is trying to take it. The other one is trying to hold on to it. Hold, meaning what? He's trying to make sure nobody takes that belt. Guess what? We're praying to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah fighting the good fight that nobody takes our crown. And part of that is constantly going through battles, getting ready, going through these spiritual warfares. So we can be deemed worthy of those crown Akim. So we can be deemed worthy of Yahweh Shah planting that glorious crown on your head. Ain't nothing better than that, man. No matter what you go through, it's nothing better than that. But hey, I pray it's been edifying. I'd like to give infinity honors to my Lord and Savior, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, Bashim Kagodash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles and elders of GMS that rule well in truth and sincerity. Again, say it takes to the shepherds of Berea camp, say it takes to the house of David, the house of God, man, women, children out there, precious word of truth and sincerity, and say it takes us to the hopeful elect. And the most high raise the other in speedy fashion. Till next time, Lord willing, praise has been edifying. Shalom.